Han Solo, Endor. Han Solo volunteered to lead the mission to destroy the New Death Star Shield Generator. He and the strike team landed on the forest moon of Endor, where they encountered scout troopers and Ewoks. Hello, and welcome to Cinturon's Corner, and today we are reviewing from Star Wars Return of the Jedi, Han Solo Endor. Now this is the last of the trio that I've got to review for the uh, new wave of uh, Return of the Jedi figures, and I'm loving them all so far. So, looking at this guy, he looks pretty cool. We've got the kind of nice poncho, not too sure about the color though. Uh, on the side we've got his DL44, it actually finally looks like it's paintedly decent as well. On the side, we've got a nice pencil drawing of uh, Harrison Ford. On the back, we've got his picture and his bio, and he's number five in the Return of the Jedi line. And on the side, carrying on that green line, right back to the front again. I picked this guy up from Jedi Archive for 19.99, and absolutely loving it. Okay, so without further ado, let's just crack this bad boy open. So here he is in his blister pack, looking all fine and dandy. And I must say, actually, a lot of people have been saying about Harrison's face, saying it doesn't look as good as the last, but looking at it, I think it looks pretty cool. So grab him out for his first impressions. And um, yeah, I don't think it looks too bad. Figure feels nice and chunky. Not too sure on this kind of uh, coat. It just feels a little bit kind of uh, cheap in a way. But anyway, we'll take his uh, pictures and we'll see. taking this guy's photos and I must admit I think this might be my pinnacle Han Solo Harrison Ford Black Series figure. I can see why there's a few people out there that don't like it. There is a few things for me that I don't like however I do think there's a massive bonus to this figure and I'll tell you as we go through. So first of all it does come with his accessories and his first accessory is his DL44 blaster and it's recreated really nicely it's all done in a black plastic we've got the details on there the nice little silver little tip we've even got the brown handle grip on there uh, with the uh, kind of scope thing on the side this fits into his holster which is on the side of his belt and um, it just fits in as normal just inside there and then it comes with this kind of like clip thing and I absolutely hate these things they just don't fit in and I just bloody hate them so once I've unpopped it I just kind of tend to just leave it unclipped his second accessory is his coat and I do feel like this is maybe the major part of the figure that is a bit of a letdown because this is kind of the reason why we're buying it is because it's the end door outfit and the coat just really kind of uh, takes away from that the stitching the very large stitching around on the cuff and down on the front just makes it look a bit horrible uh, the, the actual material itself is kind of see-through it reminds me very much of an old action man kind of uh, outfit just the shoulder parts it just doesn't fit really well over the top of him however it is another look uh, for Han Solo which is for him attacking the Endor base which is pretty cool so we can actually take this outfit off and underneath we have the ending uh, outfit so uh, with Han Solo taking on his kind of more traditional kind of look and um, it's created quite nicely so with that we've taken that coat off we can go through his articulation so his head can go left and it can go right you can look down and look up you have got a bit of a swagger in there and it's also got the lower neck movement inside there's no butterfly hinge on his arm however it can go up this far it can rotate We've got a more than a 90 degree bend at the elbow. We've got a rotation at the wrist and it's also on a hinge. And his belly can go left, right, and uh, look down this far, 
and look back. And then down to his legs, he can come up this far, back, rotation at the upper thigh, doubled knee joint, and also a rocker and a pivot. The only thing with his kind of body, uh, we have got the hinderman on his leg, which is where the holster is glued in. And everything from here down is actually reused body of uh, the best bin Han, unfortunately, but it was a good sculpt anyway, and I'm happy for it. So actually, physically looking at the Han Solo, I think he's probably one of the better ones that's come out. Um, it's just done really good, I think. I'd, it looks a little bit more kind of manly, a bit more beefy around the side and the front. The hair's more of a kind of sweat, uh, and it's looking pretty good. I mean, bringing on to the best bin Han. Um, even the skin complexion, I think, looks better, and it just is actually a, more better than this one. That's how I feel, anyway. But um, I know a lot of people out there are kind of sort of like undecisive about it. And going down, we've got his kind of nice kind of uh, waistcoat, looking at the back as well, done in a nice gloss, and all the sort of uh, details on there. We've got the upper high rise collar uh, with all the kind of wrinkles and all that in places down to this sort of black belt with the silver on there um, and onto the belt as well with a nice sort of leather-esque kind of look over it uh, and the silver buckles down to legs with the uh, yellow rivet kind of bits on the side down to his well-used black boots now the other good thing about the bonus about this figure is actually you can actually remove this part as well so we can actually pull his arms back and pull off this and now we've actually got our third Han Solo look which is after being rescued from Jabba's palace or even going to the carbon freezing chamber on Bespin yeah okay this part up here looks a little bit odd but um you know we can work around that just by on photos just sort of turning him slightly uh, so it doesn't look as odd as um, where his arms sort of have to stick over the top of the waistcoat but you know we've actually got this is our third Han Solo from one figure and I think that is actually a pretty good thing for 20 quid and, um, and I still think the actual whole figure at all is replicated really well it's just a downside on the actual main coat itself which I think is a, a bit of a letdown and a bit kind of cheap no wonder they didn't make him wear it in the Heroes of Endor set so that's kind of it. That brings me to the end of this review. You know, what do you think of this Han Solo? Which is your pinnacle Han Solo? Uh, but I think this one is not one of my top ones. So thank you very much for joining me on this one. You can comment down below. You can subscribe and follow me on Instagram, which is in the description. And I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.